I don't know about you guys, but if this is what they're saying is the high fashion of the future, but available today, well, I don't think I want to play. Remember back in the good old days when the models in the window used to wear bikinis and lingerie? I mean, seriously, right? Where the f*** am I? Did I just enter the twilight zone or what? <laughs> what the f***? So I have to admit, we've actually really been enjoying our ability just to remain self-sufficient on board. And there's only two other boats here with people on them. Well, there's one boat ahead of us now that has some locals on it. I think they kind of got uh, tired of being on land. So <laughs> there's like 10 people all staying on one fishing boat in front of us now. But aside from that, there's two other cruising boats in the anchorage. So it's been kind of cool, you know, just, you know, watching out for each other keeping an eye on the anchorage and the dinghies going back and forth and everything. But we've got no issues with food, water, anything like that. The anchorage we're in is kind of all sand bottom, so there's not really much here, but the guys over there, they're in a different area, so they went to do some fishing. And they keep catching little lobsters. They brought us some lobster the other night, and today they just brought us <laughs> uh, an octopus. Check this out. <laughs> So Maddie's pretty excited to have something new. She's had octopus before and uh, is getting ready to do some cleaning. But that is our yeah. octopus that we're going to be cooking tonight, probably on the barbecue. Very, very fresh. Very fresh. <laughs> so last night we enjoyed the best of homemade pizza on our barbecue. And tonight, we're going to try something completely different that is caught local and fresh right here. So that's on the menu for tonight. <laughs> you can see Tiki's quite interested to see what's going on uh, on deck. She's not used to these strange animals coming around. <laughs> but now we've got our first octopus on board. And apparently Maddie knows her way around octopus. <laughs> <laughs> But being a chef, I'm sure she's come in contact with pretty much every kind of food that we can even imagine. So, I mean, of course, there's much worse things we could be stuck with than a professional chef on board, right? <laughs> I mean, I like to cook too, and I can be good at it when needed, but uh, I'm just kind of left fixing all the stuff on the boat, and the project list is still piling up because we've been doing other things and preparing the boat, just getting ready for a long-term uh, well, survival. You know, if things go south anywhere, then uh, we're still good to go. I mean, if things get crazy here or anywhere else, we just pull our anchor and head to sea, and we could head offshore and do whatever we need to for almost as long as we need to, several months easily, and survive. So, it's kind of strange to be thinking that way, but when something like this happens, you're left to think about what is your plan B? What are you going to do? I think we got to pay attention to this because this is a situation that is delicate on both sides of the border. You understand why they're inflicting it, but at the same time, people are not used to being put in this circumstance. And you start locking people in their houses for several months at a time, and yeah, their personalities are going to change and things are going to happen. So we always have to be prepared, plan B. So that's uh, kind of what we're thinking about lately. And even though things are good here right now, that could change just as fast as this whole insta, as this whole situation came down on us in the first place. So it pays to pay attention.
so well. Mr. Octopussy was scheduled for dinner as part of a seafood pasta salad. Would you believe me if I told you this was lunch? Fresh grouper grilled on the barbecue with crushed pistachios, roasted red pepper, and grilled zucchini with fresh parmesan, garnished with parsley and fresh lemon. Yum. Today I got a little tip for you on solar power and how to adjust and trim for maximum output uh, on days when the sun can be a little bit tricky. So stick around and we're going to have a look. One of the biggest problems we're going to face with solar power is going to be the wind direction and the direction the boat is facing. Of course, the time of year, where the sun is transiting through the sky, across your horizon, across the top of the boat, etc. And right now, it's getting to be that time of year when the sun is going directly overhead. It's almost at exactly, you know, 90 degrees straight up at the middle of the day. So that presents a problem depending on the direction that the bow is pointing and as you can see, you see my shadow here, you can see that the sun is actually pointing straight down the boat, that's where we're getting shadows. That means the same thing for the mast. So if you look at the direction that the boat is pointed right now, you can see the sun right on the water and you follow it up and there's your sun. Going straight through all the rigging, the mast, flags, everything and they all get in the way and block your charging power. And you can see what the effect of that is because you can see the shadow of the mast going right down the center of all the panels and that cuts the panels in half and drops their efficiency by probably about 60%. The flags, same thing. We got the flags there uh, coming across, the shadows coming across these two panels here, which cuts the entire circuit from this half of the boat in half. So we're losing a lot of our charging efficiency until, like I said, the sun comes from directly above and past the mast and then we get full sun on everything on both sides. Normally this is not a big deal and the sun averages out over the course of the day because the boat keeps turning and spinning around and you know you catch your sun, you don't catch your sun, but only for a few minutes at a time. Uh, but the last couple of months that we've been here, we've had wind predominantly out of the north, just slightly east of north, and that holds our bow over that direction towards town instead of over, you know, right up into the sun here. Because the sun, as you know, rises in the east, which is right there. So as the sun rises and comes up here, it comes right over the center of the boat and casts a big old shadow from everything on the boat. And that destroys our solar power. Now the problem is, we've got another week or so of direct easterly winds. It normally comes out of the northeast, but now we've got a lot of days coming with easterly winds. And that's going to cost us at least four hours of charging because we don't get anything until the sun comes right over the top of the mast and clears aft so that we uh, start charging afternoon. But that means that we're missing a lot of our potential charging time in the morning. So what we need to do is consider how to move the bow of the boat. And that's not a difficult thing. Basically what we're going to do is put a bridle on the anchor that's going to cause the boat to pivot onto one side because we're going to put a lot of the, or a portion of the load of the anchor to one of the stern cleats at the back of the boat and turn the boat almost sideways to the wind. That's going to be okay in the wind that we've got right now. You don't necessarily want to do that if you're in a storm and it's blowing 25-30 knots because you're going to side load the boat with the wind and that's going to put a lot more stress on your anchor, of course causing the possibility of dragging. We don't have a lot of wind coming right now. That's why the wind is shifted out of the east. We've got a new pattern moving in that's bringing low wind. So it's going to be, you know, less than 15 knots for the entire week, but straight out of the east. So we need to recapture some of that sun. So that's what we're going to do is just pivot the boat and move it around so that the sun realigns with the solar panels and keeps us charging. Now, if you look at the gauge on my app on my cell phone, you can see right here that we're only getting about 14, 15 amps. Yeah, 15 amps. It's already after 9 o'clock, and normally we'd be getting about 30 to 35 amps, so we're losing half of our efficiency. By 10 o'clock, we're usually getting 60 to 70 amps, and we're still going to have half of that, so that's going to be a lot less power than what we could actually be charging right now. 
And it's going to be important to collect as much as we can right now because with the wind dropping, we get less efficiency from the wind generator. So we need to make up all of our power from solar. So that's what we're going to do is just adjust the angle of the boat and see if we can get a little bit more power than what we're getting right now because that's not going to charge us up for the first half of the day. Okay, so all we need to do this really is a good line that's about, you know, at least one of bo one boat length. So this is a spare jib sheet we've got. I'm pretty sure it's about 60 feet. We need about 50 feet because what we're going to do is tether this right onto the anchor chain itself and use it as a bridle. So we're going to tie it off the anchor chain and then I'm going to take the other end of the line to the back of the boat, tie it off on the stern cleat. And once we got the two ends secured, I start letting out the chain. And you're going to see all that's going to happen is it's going to start pulling, pulling, pulling. The green line is going to go out with the chain and start to form a triangle of line and chain that's going to move the boat slowly sideways so that we will get some sun on the solar panels instead of on the mast. So first we need to untie and tie it onto our chain. We got to make sure the line stays outside of the boat because we don't want it to crush any of our pulpit or anything as it takes the load from the chain. So basically, I've just put a clove hitch on the chain so that when the load of the rope pinches the clove hitch, there's no way it can come undone. And I just put a single half turn around the end just to keep it there. So that's that side is okay. So I'll just let that off the side of the boat. And like so. So now we'll leave that there. And we're going to pick up the other end of the green line and take it back to the stern cleat. And all the while we're just going to unfurl this and drag it along the outside edge of the boat around the solar panels into the stern cleat and then tie it off. Now we go forward and start to let the chain out and pull that line tight and swing it off the side of the boat and then see what happens. Okay, so I've got the remote for the anchor winch and you can see the green line right here has met up with the chain and tied off and I'm just gonna start letting out the chain. So. Okay, so that's almost on the bottom. So now all we got to do is wait and the wind will slowly catch the bow of the boat and push it this way because the, the green line is going to catch the tension and the wind will start to push the boat and the weight of the boat will now transfer to the uh, cleat at the back of the boat. The wind is fairly light so it might take a little while but once we get that done and achieved we'll be more sideways to the sun and that's our objective, is to get the back of the boat out over this way so that we can actually get sun on the solar panels again. If you look at our angle of the bow now, you can see that we're starting to change angle to the other boats. They're all still pointed up here, pointed towards the same island we were pointed at before, but our bow is now starting to point off towards the city. So it's working and we are coming around. And right here you can now see the shadows of the boat are going across the bimini the other way and there's the shadow of the flags over there now so they're still covering the one set of panels but that's okay because now all the ones up on the bimini and dodger are fully exposed so our bow used to be pointed over here at the island and now we have swung around and we're pointed towards the city you can see the other boats are still pointed towards the island but we have completely changed angle to the, sun, to the sun. And you look down, and you can just see the green line there 
and that is the angle we're at so far. I'm still going to let it out a little bit further, but you can see the green angle is what is now holding our direction in relation to the anchor. And that, my friends, is all there is to bridling a sailboat. And that will help you, you know, in instances like this where we want to collect more power from the sun, or also if there's a sea swell that's coming at a different angle opposing from the direction you're pointed into the wind. Sometimes we're at an island and the wind might be coming from over there, but the swell is hitting us on the side from over here. So by bridling the angle of the bow, you can actually deflect the boat again so that the waves stay on the bow. The wind is a bit more on the side, but then you don't have the boat rolling all the time. You've got your bow into the waves instead. So it's handy in a couple of different instances. And now we'll go check and see if it's actually helped us with collecting any more sun. And yes, as you can see, we are now getting over 40 amps, almost 50 amps. And that's at the same time of day, same sun, just changing the angle of the boat. So you can see it shifts around a lot just as the boat's moving, but we are collecting over 40 amps. So we've doubled our input now, so when it gets closer to 10 o'clock, we're going to have a lot more power again. It is 941 right now, we're getting 900 watts. I don't know if you can see that, but 900 watts and down here is the amperage. And we're getting just under 70 amps. I mean, that's a huge difference from where we were just 10 minutes ago. So obviously it was worth making the change. And now we just got to, the only thing we got to pay attention to now is if the wind picks up, we don't want to get broadsided by a squall. So if a squall comes through, the only thing you need to know is do not try and bring the boat up by the anchor because you will put undue stress on everything up front and you'll never be able to pull against the side load. So to, the way to approach a squall is just let this line out. So we have the green line right here. There's still enough of a tether on it, but if you get into a jam and you know the boat, you're risking going to drag or anything like that, you just untie it from that cleat right there and let it go slack and immediately the load will start to transfer back to the anchor at the front, the transom will start to swing back around, and you'll align back into the wind and reset your anchor in the proper direction. Yeah, sorry guys, I couldn't resist doing one last update. It's 10.30 now, and check this out. We're getting over 1,300 watts. If you look down here on the right, you'll see that's over 90 amps. My maximum output is 100 amps, and we're already doing over 90 at 10.30 in the morning. That's awesome. I mean, this is a monohull, remember? So a 50-foot monohull, and I can get 100 amps out of solar power. And I'm still not even using my full reserve. I've still got another controller to hook in that's going to be part of another update I'll have for you guys. And that's going to boost my output with the same solar configuration by 20 to 30%. But that's coming up. But it just makes you realize, you know, I mean, anything is possible, guys. A 50 foot monohull with 100 amps of solar power at 12, 13 volts. You saw it here first, sophisticated lady. And one last time, look at that, 1,350 watts down here. You can see it's just pegged at 100 amps. 
and it just stays there constant. It's been there for over three hours, almost four hours now. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Anyway, hope you guys learned something new today. Hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, be sure and leave me a comment below. If you got any questions, again, leave me a comment below. Love to hear from you guys. Till then, have a good day. Stay safe. We'll see you next time.